At some point during our lives, we're gonna think about downsizing our home. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into why people downsize. It could be for a more affordable situation, it could be for a different lifestyle, or a more convenient location that's right for you. There's six factors in specific to consider when you're thinking about downsizing. Let's take a look. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent near you, or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, there's a lot of reasons why people choose to downsize and contrary to the popular belief for what a lot of people think, this is something for the older generation to consider when they get ready to go into their golden years to make life a little bit more financially affordable or perhaps a smaller house that's easier for them to maintain. But here's the thing. It really is not age bound when somebody chooses to downsize. This is the decision that faces a lot of us through the course of our lifetime. Sometimes you have families that are realistically thinking ahead of where they wanna be 15, 20, and 30 years out, and they might be in their 30s with kids in high school, and they're thinking, what happens when my kids leave the nest and they start their lives anew? The house that we have now may be too big, and they start thinking about downsizing when they're juniors or seniors in high school. It's a smart move to make sure that they can have that mortgage paid off ideally by the time they do hit their golden years. So this is not an age restricted type thing. This is something that affects all of us and it's very important to understand the factors that go into this. So let's take a closer look with the first reason being finances. Now, depending on where you live, it may be an extremely expensive area. If you're on the coast and you're living in an area where the average sales price of a home might be like a million dollars and you may own one of these million plus dollar homes as well, you might be thinking, okay, when I stop working, what's going to happen? Or how big is this home and how much does it cost? me in terms of property tax, home maintenance, and just the utility bills every single month, and you're planning out where to go next. It may become cost prohibitive in your future plan to stay in that location as real estate continues to appreciate in that area, cost of living goes up. So the financial consideration is one that you really should think about and sit down and consider, hey, you know, how much money do I realistically need to live on every single month? And what kind of lifestyle do I wish to enjoy three years, five years, 10 years, 30 years into the future? And and get real with yourself about budgeting and about financial planning into the future. This is where a financial advisor, if you don't have one, can become extremely helpful as you plan out what's best for your financial future. The second reason is the size of the family. As we were talking about a moment ago, this is not something that just affects the older generation. This affects all generations as they're thinking about what's best for them and their family moving forward. If you have kids that are in high school right now and you have like a 5,000 square foot home and you might have like three kids and they're all getting ready to graduate in the next three to four years, what happens? when they leave the nest? What happens as they go off to college and they begin their lives and they begin their personal legend in achieving their goals and dreams in their life? It leaves your house very empty. It's not just gonna be you or you and your partner in the house. So is it really too big of a house? Is it too much house? Do you need that size of a home? These are so many considerations that people think about and it's really smart to think about this earlier on than later on because you could realistically downsize your home, get into the house where you believe you want to retire in the future or go to another state that you've always wanted to be in so that you and your significant other can live the lifestyle that you want to enjoy and that you didn't have a chance to as you are raising your kids to become prosperous citizens in our country. The third fact is the location of the house. Now, it's more than just the resale value that we're talking about. When we're talking about the location and planning out a downsize, what we specifically want to take a look at, is, again, is that lifestyle decision. Do you want to have the freedom and flexibility to travel? Where should this home be located? Should it be close to a major airport? Should it be close to a major port? What kind of situation do you want to be in with that location? Should it be a gated community, guard gated community, maybe even a high rise, maybe a condo? There's so many factors that go into it depending on what you want to be doing with your overall lifestyle. Let's be clear, choosing to downsize your home is more of a lifestyle decision and a financial decision than anything else. And it really results from what your passions are, the lifestyle you wish to see yourself live moving forward. Think about it and write down your goals and aspirations of why downsizing is important to you. The fourth factor is the floor plan of the property. Now this comes up a lot and this really does come up a lot with like the older generations that I work with here in Las Vegas, Nevada. They have these gargantuan two 
two-story homes and they're saying, Andrew, you know, I'm 65 and I'm already struggling with the stairs. My wife is like 60 and she's thinking, you know, how am I gonna get up and down these stairs? We really don't want one of those chairs that you sit down and push the button and go up and toot around the stairs and it takes you 30 minutes to get up the stairs. They really don't like that idea and they want to be able to enjoy their mobility. It only makes sense to do that. So sometimes coming out of a two-story home into a ranch style home makes a lot of sense if you're planning for the future and forecasting the realities as we age and what happens to our bodies. So all of us age differently. Different things have happened in our life that have caused us perhaps health benefits or health detriments that we need to consider into our future. Considering what kind of floor plan is going to be best for you, that's going to be best for your health is a smart move to make now. The fifth factor to consider is what will you take with you? Now, if you have one of those gargantuan 5,000, 7,000, 12,000 square foot homes, then you want to consider how much stuff you really have. It's always amusing whenever I help people here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, sell their home and get ready to buy another one. They're like, Andrew, you know, we're downsizing and we're losing like 2,000 square feet. We did not realize we had so much stuff we accumulated over the years. We hadn't even seen some of the stuff for 15 years from the first time we bought this house. What are we supposed to do with all of it? And I would say that's a really good point. First thing that we want to do is assess what you have and decide what you want to take with you. What are those things that have sentimental or emotional value to you that you wish to take with you into the new place and that you envision seeing in your decor of your new home? Those are the priority items that you want to take with you. For everything else, there's an assortment of options from an estate sale or a garage sale if you want to try to make some money. There's always eBay that you can go on or there's eBay that you could use too. So there's so many different considerations and perhaps one of them that you might want to think about is simply paying it forward by donating it to a local thrift store to let somebody else enjoy it or giving some of your furnishings to family and friends that have always liked something that you have or perhaps to your kids to be able to help their house begin looking like their new home with stuff they grew up with. Think about what you want to take with you and consider what you want to leave behind. The sixth factor is the future lifestyle you wish to enjoy. This has been a recurring theme throughout our conversation today and the reason being is in real estate practice when I work with people that downsize it is the sole purpose the sole motivation for the vast majority of people why they are downsizing finances location what you want to do with your stuff all of those things are real considerations that you should have going into a downsize but ultimately it stems from a lifestyle decision maybe you want to move to a foreign country maybe you want to start just living on a boat somewhere and cruising around the world these are lifestyle decisions decisions that are unique to you and only you know what kind of lifestyle is right for you. Please consider carefully the lifestyle that you wish to lead moving forward. Doing this correctly at the right time in your life could ensure that you have no mortgage going forward throughout your golden years, leaving you with a robust retirement with a lifestyle you're ready to love. So now let's talk about eight ways to know when you're ready to sell your house and how to deal with seller's remorse. Yep, it's a real thing. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.